Good morning friends, Diana here from Garden Love. Today I decided to come out to the garden and try to see what I can find and what I can make from the garden. As you guys can see, I still have tons of garlics growing here and hopefully that they will bolt up before it starts to rain and before um, you know we don't get as sunny days as we usually get. But as you can see, there is some that I can pull and cook with. Since we're in sunny California, Southern California, so 9B, I'm hoping that these onions still have an opportunity to continue to grow and I can harvest them as I need them. So far, I feel that I've harvested quite a few onions from this garden. I did learn that I cannot put anything around it that will shade them because then it will slow their growth, such as the basil that I have growing next to them and the moringa tree that kind of gave them a shadow and it prevented the sun from getting to them. So lesson learned, note take it, take it and for the next time I'll make sure not to grow with next to any other things that might shade them. Now you guys might be wondering what these are. These do look like tomatillos, but they're not. These are actually ground cherries. I bought some from a seed company and I was hoping to get that one gold berry that I found years ago that I absolutely fell in love with. Sad to say, this is not the same gold berry. This is not as sweet as the original one that I purchased. This has more like, it tastes like a tomatillo with a little tiny bit of sweetness. So what I decided to do since I'm harvesting things from the garden and these are really being eaten by me and my daughters. So I'm going to make a sweet spicy salsa and I think this would be the great addition for it because they're kind of like tomatillos but they have a little hint of sweetness. So I am going to be adding these with my little red tomatoes that I harvest and hopefully since a lot of the people in my house don't like a lot of spicy food they will enjoy this with some chips. I'm also grabbing a little bit of oregano to throw into the salsa and let's see what else we can find. Our little cat Finn doesn't fail every time I'm in the garden. He follows me around and makes sure that I'm okay. He plays around, you know, the garden while I'm harvesting or planting or amending. Whatever it is that I'm doing in the garden, he is there visiting. He is quite a little friendly cat and we really enjoy his company. I like the fact that he hangs out around the property, doesn't leave and just protects the property. I'm wondering if I were to get another cat, if he were to do the same, or how would we train a cat to stay in the property like this little kitty cat stays? Now I've got some little cherry tomatoes, some ground cherries that taste more like a tomatillo, some onions, and some oregano. I'm going to look for a jalapeno and when I came back here for this one jalapeno plant that I've had for about three years and it keeps overwintering, I noticed I really didn't have any growing that I can cook with but I did notice there's a, quite a few of them hanging that were already dehydrated on the little stem. I think that I can use these uh, as dehydrated chilies and just blend it in with the salsa. I'm going to give it a try since I have nothing else growing in the garden that's spicy. I think this will be a good addition. Moringa is so, has so many good vitamins. I'm going to add a few leaves to the salsa so it can also be a healthy salsa. As you guys have seen the moringa in the hillside garden is ginormous. This was also gifted to me growing in a pot and it's already growing pots as you guys can see here. I'm going to save those for seeds so I can grow some more moringa trees and it has a lot of flowers so it goes to show that you guys can grow them both in the ground and in a pot so if you guys don't have a lot of space don't get discouraged you guys can still grow plenty of food in containers when i walk here i can't help myself than to go and visit all my fruit trees you guys know that this lemon tree is one of my pride and joy trees because i've learned so much from them and I also have some key limes growing on this key lime tree growing in this container. So I'm going to go ahead and harvest some because I will be making a soup a little later on. And I think this will be great for my soup. This sauce is going to be super simple. Basically, I'm going to boil some water, clean everything that I harvest, and then let the little tomatillos 
um, the, I guess the cherry tomatoes and the ground cherries. I'm going to rinse them first, make sure that they're clean. These little ground cherries have a little bit of a sticky su um, substance, so I want to make sure that I remove all of that. I don't want my salsa to be slimy, and I just want to make sure that I clean them really well because they were in the ground. They have been there. The plant, oh my god, if you guys remember, the plant had so many flowers. Our bees loved it. So if I ever grow this... Um, ground cherry again it would be mainly for my bees because they were in love with these little ground cherry plants it produces tons of flowers and as you can see tons of ground cherries there's still tons more in the ground i'm not letting them go to waste what i've been doing is collecting some every day and giving them to the chickens i figure we might be eating it i shouldn't let it go to waste i'm letting them go to the chickens and the chickens are actually loving it at first I, they didn't know what to do with them when i threw it at them and the ground and they were like what is this they managed to peel the little um, lantern material off of it and eventually they started eating it by the next day everything i put in there it was completely gone so the water basically came to a boil and i'm throwing all of my um, little tomatoes ground cherries and the tomatoes in there i put a clove of garlic and some onions in here as well that way i can go ahead and um, cook it all together once it was completely cooked and the tomatoes were soft enough i added a little piece of moringa so it could cook a little bit and then eventually what i did is um, took it all with a spoon that had some draining holes and put it in the blender. I don't want it to be too watery so I didn't put any liquids to it, just the liquids that the tomatoes came with it was good enough. I put it in the blender and I just started blending it. You can always add the onions and the garlic to the boiling pot or you can add it after in this case i totally forgot to add it to the boiling pot i wish i would have because in my opinion it tastes a lot better but it's never too late to add it so i went ahead and added once it was um you know ready to get blended make sure to take the dirty top layers of the onions these were homegrown so they do come a little dirty and once you have it ready just go ahead and add it to your mix like I did here, next time I'll remember to boil it with the tomatoes because I think it has a much better flavor. You can see the little moringa leaves blending in the blender and I'm happy to know that this little salsa is going to be tasty and healthy. This salsa was super easy to make, it's not spicy. Lily even enjoyed it and I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. It was just a super short video showing you guys what I have going on in the garden and how I'm using my garden in the kitchen. I hope you guys all have a blessed day and I'll see you in the next one.